Welcome to the 2021 Annual General Meeting for the Association for Canadian Education Resources. Your host and chair of the Board of Directors is Madeline Webb. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, and welcome to ACER's annual general meeting. Uh, we're going to start with a, uh, a number of uh, presentations and uh, updates from ACER. The first one up is uh, Elizabeth McLean talking about the family tree. Okay, first, I just have a few things to mention about the communications changes we've done. Uh, we have new mission, vision, and value statements. We're discussing in continually the website uh, with a with a, an aim of making it uh, more relevant and up to date. We have uh, many revised program descriptions. Have French translations beginning of program in, uh, materials. Thank you to our volunteer translator Anne Massicott. Now, the Family Tree Project is something I'm particularly uh, excited about because it's been for me, with only a year on the board, a way of finding out about the past of Acer and the people that have uh, kind of grown up through it. And um, we are starting by profiling several of the interns that have been hired from educational institutions yearly to work with uh, ACER staff and uh, students in schools and volunteers in the community in administering uh, the programs. They have training functions, they measure trees, do all the sorts of things that I hope to get involved with in eventually through ACER. Um, I've spoken, I've done six to date, uh, Jason Weiler, Daniel Kim, Julia Bielas, um, Tyler Orsolak, Namisha Basiniaka, and uh, in each of these people, I've uh, discovered really uh, committed environmentalists and uh, hardworking people whose careers are taking interesting turns. And to that end, I'd like to introduce you to a couple of them. You will find on the website the uh, the profiles that we've written with a few uh, photographs of the subject person. And uh, you will find these under the news tab on the ACER website. Uh, the, the plan is to interview more and more of them and uh, perhaps expand the um, profiles of ACER family members as we like to think of them to include uh, some staff members, community volunteers. Uh, at this point, uh, we're just beginning. Anyway, the first uh, person I'd like you to meet is Tyler Orsulak. Tyler was um, recently uh, an ACER intern, uh, but he also had education in another field that uh, was kind of a uh, computing interest. He, he was interested in criminology. So he's got a degree in that and uh, also a very strong interest and a degree also uh, in the environmental field. And uh, I'd like you to uh, meet Tyler. Could we see I Tyler, was lucky please? to get a, uh, a position as a forestry environmental enforcement officer type of position where I was enforcing the tree bylaws in the city, measuring trees, identifying any hazards associated with them, and working with the local bylaws. I was a successful applicant in a new job posting as an environmental enforcement uh, officer with the city of Hamilton in the water department. So that's currently where I am now, where I would be responding to spills that occur throughout the city, making sure those are being cleaned up and coordinated uh, within the enforcement side, but also the cleanup and prevention of that, as well as working now with uh, construction dewatering permits in the city you know, without that experience, I wouldn't have been able to have that first position 
uh, in municipal law enforcement. It was the direct um, learning experiences when it came to measuring trees and the protocols that we learned that I was able to bring to the city and uh, start my career from there. So, you know, thank you for the opportunity. You know, if you keep your mind um, directed with a goal and you put in the work and you gain the experience that is needed over time, um, it'll pay off in the end. Thank you, Tyler. Um, the second person that uh, I'd like you to meet is probably one that's familiar to uh, ACER regulars, and that is Namisha Basnyaka, who um, is currently the program manager uh, for ACER, and she started out in 2014 as uh, an intern like Tyler, and uh, but she's remained with the organization much longer and in staff in a staff capacity. Uh, at present, she is um, in the process of a career change. She is going back to university to uh, begin accounting studies, and um, but she's still going to be with Acer uh, part time. I'd like you to meet. Namisha, uh, who will tell you about uh, her experience with ACER. As program manager, I've gotten to work on a lot of ACER programs. Uh, initially, the first program I worked on was Planting for Change. I still, um, I did work throughout the years on Planting for Change on um, applying for funding and getting the schools planted. I also got to work on the Riparian Rangers program, uh, which is planting on riparian zones with conservation authorities. Uh, this past year, I got to work on the project Crossroads, which is our newest program. Um, and I've also gotten to work a little bit on our other programs like Go Global and Tree Caching as well. Mainly, I learned project management skills here. So part of my uh, work at ACER, in addition to running pro programs and uh, all of the different projects, has involved um, doing administrative work. So I've dealt with like paying bills and stuff and working with the auditor when the audit when it's time to do the audit and um, keeping track of all of the paychecks and everything that needs to go out and that those kind of skills I think will be uh, useful, uh, useful in accounting. In accounting. I'm learning a little bit more about how to actually read the statements that I've been looking at for so long. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Namisha. Namisha, your your work for Acer is much valued, and uh, we know it will continue. We wish you the best, and um, uh, I want everyone to uh, take a look at the profile series on the Acer website. There will be more, more to watch for, more to come. Thank you. Back to Madeline. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. That was great and great work, everybody uh, that was involved, the interviewees, Elizabeth doing the stories and uh, so whoever was behind the camera, maybe Fazel. Thank you so much. Okay, now we're going to uh, go on and, uh, and Namisha will come back and talk to us about the Planting for Change updates. Namisha. Hi. Uh, so our Planting for Change program is our schoolyard program um, and we work with students to create an out, hands-on outdoor lab where they can learn about climate change and we plant our suite of indicator species and in 2020 we were able to add our 57th school to our Planting for Change network which was Morningstar Middle School. Uh, a great teacher Catherine Everett managed to get the planting together in fall of 2020 in spite of the restrictions of the pandemic and two classes got the opportunity to plant and measure trees. And this coming year, we're actually looking forward to planting five more schools. Um, we've already secured the plant, the funding for these schools. And the schools are Owen Wood Public School, St. Catherine of Siena Separate School, Settlers Green Public School, Corsair Public School, and Lancaster Public School. And all of the teachers are really excited about being able to be a part of this program. And we're hoping we're gonna be able to do it in fall. Thank you. Thank you so much, Venetia. Great work. And now we have, I believe we have Catherine Sopler, who's going to talk about the project, project Crossroads in Brampton. Welcome, Catherine. Hi, thank you. And it's so great to be here. Um, hello to everyone uh, watching us live on YouTube. This is the second 
uh, virtual AGM that uh, ACER has held uh, owing to pandemic restrictions. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Project Crossroads um, and I'm going to then we're going to see a video of the volunteers and we'll let you know about some new programs that are coming. So Project Crossroads takes the Planting for Change schoolyard program and adapts it uh, for uh, placement in areas where students live in low tree canopy areas and it's good for people of all ages and backgrounds. Next slide, please, Fazel. Thank you. So um, it, there, um, it was very difficult uh, because uh, we, we, when we made plans in 2019 for the proposal uh, that was funded in 2020, we had no idea that it was going to come under lockdown. And what lo under lockdown meant was that we couldn't communicate through our regular networks of schools and faith communities and uh, agencies, not-for-profit agencies embedded in the high needs areas uh, because their facilities likewise were locked down and nobody knew what was going on with the bug until later. So uh, what we had to do to reach people was uh, go digital, even though ACERS activities are outdoors. Uh, and uh, the invitation that we created uh, showed a map of the area, the dark spot, the dark or darker orange area is Bramley Snap area. With the, that is the Sustainable Neighborhood Action Program for the city of Brampton. And the dots are the schools. And you can see that there are schools embedded in the area and schools that are adjacent. And what ACER understands from ground truth is that people don't necessarily live uh, at, at the school that is closest to them. They could live inside or outside of the area or living inside or outside of the area. They could go to a school inside of the area. So uh, the planting areas were the public park, Folkestone, uh, Caprit Towers, which is an apartment building, and Chelsea Gardens, which is Peel Housing. Um, and uh, and these are photographs of uh, of uh, the different people who were engaged. So uh, to communicate, we have created a digital invitation, and so then we had a short code that we could send in an email that we could text to people on the telephone, uh, so that we could uh, publicize uh, on social media, Facebook and Twitter predominantly, but also LinkedIn. Next, and this slide uh, tells about uh, our impacts. We had a total of five planting events in three Knights Bridge locations. 71 new volunteers came out and uh, to a person when they completed a self-perception survey, they were uh, very happy and highly recommended to come back. We planted 153 large trees, which was the biomass equivalent to 1,840 of the smaller trees, which are normally planted on the schoolyards. Uh, we made a presentation to Peel Regional Council. We told them about our application for $1.5 million to Environment Canada, that which was very ambitious. We wanted a letter of support for them, which they gave. Uh, we came up with new programs, and Alice will talk about that a little bit later. Uh, can we go to the next slide, please? So uh, we're going to have a video of the volunteers testimonial. Al Elisa Chetty, who you see in this photograph, uh, got a Brampton Citizen of the Year for 2020. Uh, and she was on the front page of uh, Peel Weekly just this week. And on the right hand side, this report uh, of all the findings is available on ACER's website. And uh, you can see the letter of support from Peel Region. Can you run video please, Fazal? I'm in grade 11 and because of the pandemic, I've been doing online school. So my classes actually start at 12 o'clock. So I thought, why not wake up early and come out and help the community in the morning before school? When I first went over there, it was like, well, I'm going to just go do something in the community because uh, I want to be involved um, more. But what I took out of it was like the the benefits and the effects they have on these people living in Knightsbridge, in Folkestone, in Fallingdale, they they love it and it benefits them, their children, their our seniors that live in the neighborhood. And my students have come out to help. Um, they are helping tag the trees, measuring them, using a, a machine to help measure their diameter. Yeah, we were measuring them on the root collar and um, with the root collar, we measured at DBH and did the crown. 
where we measured from one side to one side and then did that uh, again from a different angle. So tree mapping is about measuring trees on campus and we need to identify trees, label them and map them on Google map. And we have done uh, overall 400 trees on campus. It is quite exciting. Next slide, please. Thanks. So uh, one of the new products is Mulch Measure and More, and this is a task that you'll hear about from uh, Alice a little bit later on. Uh, it's a refreshed arrangements between the municipalities and the schools uh, uh, and creates the task for Canada Summer Jobs to meet with the uh, people out in the community and learn how to mulch and measure the um, plants. Um, at Tree Trackers is a new program, and we have a video about that, that they're going to be field testing this summer in preparation for the fall. Next slide. Run the video, please. There's only one video, Catherine. Okay, so it was the Tree Trackers video. Okay, but... Um, so Alice is going to be next, I guess. Madeline, back to you. Thanks so much, Catherine. Yes, and now uh, Alice is going to bring us up to date on all the breaking news and uh, what's happening with ACER going forward. Thank you very much. And I would like to go back to Catherine because she has a better way of saying what we're just finished uh, after she finished Project Crossroads. She should take it to the next level, which has just been funded just got the money, the beginning money in the bank for the Canadian Healthy Communities Initiative. And I'll take it back, Catherine, to explain that because it's a good segue uh, after her presentation. Okay, so Project Crossroads was a pilot uh, uh, in Knightsbridge. And after we reported to uh, the region, we got that letter of support. We, we did probably another 10 proposals. Canadian Healthy Communities Initiative recognizes that people living in low tree canopy areas were high, had the hardest uh, impact of COVID. And we, what we proposed to them was that tree keeping uh, and tree planting activities would help bring relief uh, to COVID distress. It would get people outside in safe pandemic ac adapted activities, social, it's good for students. Uh, they, it strengthens their STEM and their soft and social skills and leadership skills. Uh, and we have a survey that was completed in Knightsbridge. As I mentioned, 100% of the people who were interviewed said that they uh, enjoyed it and they'd recommend a friend. So we're going to be taking that survey back. Uh, Dixie Bloor area is an area with a similar community profile to Knightsbridge. High uh, rates of immigration, newcomers, low income, um, uh, low tree canopy but, and um, highly impacted with the COVID. Uh, so uh, we've just been funded $50,000 uh, and uh, we're working with uh, some agencies that are on the ground, including settlement agencies, Boys and Girls Club Appeal uh, and community living. So the aim is to be inclusive, people of all ages and backgrounds and abilities. Uh, and uh, the Canada Summer Job students are being uh, getting an orientation on the policy background that shapes this grant and the political context. And um, and look at Ace, look at Alice smile for Acer. Wow, that's great. <laughs> Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Catherine. So I wanted to say how delighted I am that we have this funding to move forward and involve almost everybody uh, uh, that we know in the area, and then some. So to uh, lead on to what's breaking news also is that we have these Canada summer jobs and thanks to Fazal Khan, yes, there they are. Thanks to him, we actually applied to nine MPs in the Peel region and we received two student payments uh, approvals for two students for this nine regions. So we have 16 weeks of summer work for students. And they've started uh, and I've broken them into the Brampton team and the Mississauga team. And the Brampton team is led by Dimitri Basmat, whose picture was up there a minute ago. 
in the red shirt, and he's reading, leading the the, the uh, uh, Brampton team. He might want to mention, say a few words to Mitro, and then also maybe we can find uh, uh, Krish. Maybe not. Don't know. Thank you, Alice, and thank you everybody for having me. It's a pleasure to be here, and I'm really thankful for the opportunity to lead our Canada Summer Job students in Brampton. The teams in Brampton and Mississauga have been really busy reaching out to various community organizations, politicians, and community stakeholders as we continue to have a presence and show our Acer face in the community. And as we get into the summer months, our teams will be planning and organizing various community events and initiatives. So stuff like the Biggest Tree Contest, community stakeholder, stakeholder trainings for mulching, measuring, and more, improving our Ecology 101 curriculum for students, and eventually having a a follow-up tree planting in Knightsbridge in the fall. So we have various initiatives and organizations that we're going to be doing over the summer months, and we're quite excited to work with Acer in building our next generation of environmentalists here in Peel Region. Thank you, Demetrio, and and the wonderful student body that has been again gathered together to make this all happen this summer. It's wonderful to have people in the young people in grade eleven to and up to post grads nice variety of backgrounds and skills working together and learning all different things being mentored by their experts and experienced people in their field so uh i'm really grateful for this big opportunity to do things that acer has put on a side burner for a long time because we didn't have the funds to do some of this and with their willingness to learn we were able to, we are not able to pull these things together and get them moving again delighted to do that so moving on to the uh quickly to the trillium grant it, an ontario trillium foundation is uh, has approved a big grant to uh, for six months for us as an organization to uh, document and move ahead with this pivot to the digital world and 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 including adding it to our hands-on programs and so we're able then to develop a marketing strategy and forward-looking uh, experts to help us move into this century properly as an organization. We're always able to adapt our programs to the needs of the people but with the bottom line of measurement and reporting skills that have to be put in place. So there's protocols with cumulative and, and uh, compatible data always going forward that's available to everyone. So that's the bottom line there. Uh, I want to mention that, to go back to what Catherine said, the Mulch Measure More program is something designed for how do you have a class get ready to go outside for the first time as a teacher who's never taken anyone outside before as a classroom teacher. So how do you organize that under COVID conditions? So I wrote the protocol for COVID planting and so on, and it was been field tested. And now we know how to do this just without planting, but just basically inventorying your schoolyard, mapping it, uh, identifying trees and so on. And then at, after you're mulching, you're getting all the free mulch and so on. And eventually you'll be able to measure the trees, put them in the data sheet, usually Excel, and then ma map the trees and do the carbon calculations of the carbon that's stored in these trees on schoolyards. That's the Mulch Measure More program we're introducing to teachers to be able to use it according to the abilities of their students and divide them into small groups or big groups, whatever they feel comfortable with. So that's mulch measure more for that introductory and then lead them on to more difficult tasks for the students according to the needs and abilities of these kids. So that could be used in the future by the operations side of almost every institution that I know of because the carbon calculations that are in the stored in the trees that are there uh, can be used eventually uh, as uh, write-offs, write-downs, whatever you like to call them, for the carbon that's coming out of the greenhouse gas emissions. So it's an interesting way to move forward as a pioneer uh, organization, bringing this forward in the future of 2021. The other program I wanted to mention is the one we just submitted to uh, Toronto Waterfront. We're calling it My Don, capital M, small I, capital D O N, bars the Don River. And it's quite precedent setting. I think it'll be a fantastic addition to launch in 2024 when Portlands opens. 
And it can be used anywhere, really. But the concept is very exciting because real-time data from TRCA, water monitoring stations along the Don, and 1,900 of them being put in the portlands, will be able to have the citizen science access real-time data. And to the students or any age group will be able to come to that water station, water monitoring station, take pictures, images of what's going on with the vegetation in a certain distance around them and be able then to upload it in a game manner and win badges and points and answer challenges as they go through and learn a little ecology, et cetera, et cetera, when they open the challenge and bring other people in as part of their challenge too to be to join the game. So lots of exciting um, ways to handle this and we're calling it MyDon for this particular proposal. But I'm going to encourage other places like Mississauga, other cities that have our towns, villages, townships that have water courses running into the Great Lakes, because this is, has very basic recipe cards, so to speak, for how to do this, including the, the citizens, by, by the citizens. And this data will be used for uh, examining and, and reinforcing the career scientists who are trying to do this and there's not enough of them to go around, but we can supplement them with proper monitored protocol data. So those are the breaking news that I have in my mind. Maybe some other members can add to that. There's a lot of things happening and breaking loose out of COVID, worse times, we hope, into the good times ahead, keeping us busy outdoors and online as well. With your device, because most people feel comfortable only outdoors when they have their device these days. Thank you. Thank you, Alice. Isn't that too true? We have to have our devices with us. And so now uh, we can take some questions uh, from, the, uh, from the audience. Have we got a video for my Don? Yes, we do. Okay, so let's see that. We're so excited to be part of the uh, My Dolls project because we want to gamify the citizen science project so that kids and families will want to going out and monitor the natural environment around the Portland with fun and engagement. It's important that we understand how to engage our residents in looking at climate change issues at the local level. And I'm really excited about this project in that we can support scientists with everyday actions on the ground using open data and digital tools. The most important thing is to connect the citizen science observations to the real scientist data so that we can enhance materials and data that are being collected by the career scientists and involve citizens and volunteer observers over time. I'm looking to bring to this project the technology component coupled with the data visualization in order to create citizen science models and use them in a, in a more compelling and interactive way. We're so looking forward to bringing new technology and gamification to this exciting opportunity. Thank you. Okay, well, that's, that's really good. I believe we have Krish with us now. Krish? You're muted. You're muted. Hi everyone, sorry about that. It's really nice to be here. Uh, I was tuned into the live stream and now I'm glad to be able to have the opportunity to introduce myself. Uh, so I'm the Mississauga team lead. I've been working with three interns of different ages as well, from high school as well as all the way up to university. But the thing that unites us all is the fact that we're all students. And so I'm looking forward to seeing how we can you know, contribute our part to not just the community, but also to support the work of Acer in the city. And uh, I'm interested to see how this goes forward. I don't have a background in environmental management or in regards to trees and science or climate change, but I'm more than happy to try and learn a bit more while I'm at it. So glad to be here and thank you for having me. Thanks, Krish. Alice, do you want to say anything? Yes, I, um, yes. Krish uh, is being very modest. He, uh, his background is uh, a master's, I think, in international relations, and it's from 
various, uh, he's attended various places in England, and I think England and uh, Harvard or whatever, down on Hopkins, something like that. He'll have to tell you more accurately than me. But anyway, he's being very modest, but he's leading the team of a wonderful variety of young people there. Yes, one. absolutely. Okay, so um, now I hear that uh, we do have time for questions and answers. Uh, does anyone, uh, but I'm hearing here that uh, I'm looking at the chat and I don't see any questions. So I'm wondering, uh, does anyone that's uh, else who's participating uh, have a question here? Okay, I'm seeing no questions. Okay, so shall we, uh, shall we break then now for the um, uh, move to the formal meeting? And uh, uh, did you want to do the land acknowledgement uh, then before? Yeah. Well, we have to, uh, yes, I was going to do it then. Yes. yes. Okay. When you open the formal meeting. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. So now do we have a time then for the formal meeting? Is it, is it, uh, are we going to go immediately to it or? 2.35 it I thought it was announced. Okay. Uh, we have a break, five minute break. So that will bring us to 2.36 according to my computer camera. So shall we go for that then, 2.36? And uh, we, we're going to leave this platform and we're going to go to the Google Meet. So Thanks, Michelle. Everybody's got the link to the Google Meet? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe check your link. Yeah.